Hey there, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another video. I think I might have said in that Robin Williams video that it would be the last collection discussion video. Um, actually, all those videos, Schwarzenegger, Tianu, Robin Williams, that was done in April, pre-recorded. And I haven't done much because I've been slowly recuperating from being sick. I'm still taking it it day by day. But if you, you know, I do do a couple more of these type of videos on folks like this guy, Oliver Gruner. Now he's an action star. There's quite a few of his films I enjoy. This is a guy who was in the French military. He was in a commando unit. And then he trained in kickboxing, became a kickboxing champion, I think, in, uh, in France. And then late 80s, around there, started doing movies. Now, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Olivier Gruner or Oliver Gruner. Because even in movie trailers, they pronounce it two different ways. Some say Oliver Gruner. Some say Olivier Gruner. So feel free to let me know which is the correct pronunciation. One I don't have, I thought I know I had it, but I can't find it. Is one called Sector Four Extraction. Uh, one of his uh, latest new ones that he actually directed as well, because the writer of the film actually liked my stuff and wanted my honest thoughts, and wasn't wasn't the biggest fan of that. But he was very nice, very polite. I don't even know if that person watches my stuff anymore. Um, but yeah, so I, sorry I can't show that, but he was a very nice person. So if you watch him, thank you for that. But into Bruner, there's his first film, Angel Town. Um, it says Mark Dacascos, but he's in it, blinking you miss it. I don't even think his character has a name. He's in for literally like five seconds as a guy that gets beat up, and uh, I guess they put that on there because he's a recognizable name. And for I understand, this has a Blu-ray overseas, but I'm fine with the DVD. Pretty much, uh, Gruner is an exchange student. Comes over. There's these gangs and things going on. And he has to kick some ass. Now there's this cover, and this actually has a different cover. Right there. Just for a change of pace, let me change that cover. Fast pace, short film. Well, it feels short in a good way. It doesn't feel dragged out. Uh, well done action set pieces. Jeff Amata, who's worked with John Carpenter and Bitro Little China, among other films. He's a stunt coordinator, directed by Eric Carson. A lot of ass kicking, a lot of good martial arts. Just if you like action movies, uh, this is worth a look, Angel Town. Really fun flick. Then one of his best ones, which I hear there's a Blu-ray of this, but I don't know. I've heard bad things about the Blu-ray. It's overseas. And I think nowadays you have to pay a fortune for it. And there's rumors that a company, MVD, might put out a Blu-ray of this, which I'd be curious about. Nemesis. Great movie, easily one of Albert Pion's best films. This Cyborg, Dollman, Sword and the Sorcerer, those are definitely to me the high points of Albert Pion. This shows that you could do a lot with a low budget because there's a lot of stuff in this. There's stop motion for some of the robots at the robot, you know, cyborgs at the end. There's fisticuffs, there's action scenes, there's firefights, there's explosions. There's a scene that I swear someone saw this and ripped it off for Underworld. Because there's a scene where 
Gruner's character shoots out the floor and then goes through the floor. Only in this, he goes through like three, four floors. There's a moment where he's on this long slide and he's shooting backwards and or no I think he's fighting uh, cyborg and puts his head up and the head goes off and you get a lot of bang for your buck in this movie and it would be nice to see what this looks like in HD but yeah Nemesis a very well done picture and yeah I just when I look at films nowadays that I'm like, that's what you did with your budget? This is what they did with their budget. And this is impressive. It's a low budget, but they the money's on the screen. I appreciate that. And then my favorite Bruner film is either that film or this film, Automatic. Which is kind of a die-hard type of movie, but sort of a sci-fi mix of it. Speaking of cyborgs or robots, he's an automatic, which is a robot. A home security device. Man, machine, security guard, defender, and handyman. When a female employee is assaulted at work, an automatic prototype intervenes and accidentally kills her offender. What's set in motion is a manhunt for the machine and the girl throughout the company's headquarters. That's where we get sort of the die hard type of all this stuff happening in one building. Once again, thought it was pretty well handled for the low budget that they had. John Glover, who was the executive guy in Gremlins 2, he was at the beginning of Robocop 2 in the commercial with the guy who gets electrocuted in the car because it's security. Really fun movie, automatic, not the best cover, but I believe this also has Jeff Kober, I believe, the villain from The First Power. I believe it's him. But yeah, really enjoy automatic. But it's either this or Nemesis, which is my favorites of his. Next up. I would definitely put this in my top five, directed by Isaac Florentine. This is a guy who's, I've said his name quite a few times. He did Undisputed 2 and 3. He did John Carl Van Damme's The Shepherd Border Patrol. He did a film with uh, Derry Daniels. I forget what it was called already. Cold Harvest, I believe. Uh, really good action director. And I think this is another solid one. Mark Singer, the Beastmaster, is the villain in this movie. You also have James Brolin. Doing good fighting and fisticuffs. Well-handled action by the director. Had a short running time of 88 minutes. Takes place in 1865. The mysterious army officer who brings justice to the Old West. I thought this was a really good flick. Again, I'm not going to go too much detail into these for those who are interested in seeing them. Mercenary. Decent flick. Uh, John Ritter. Uh, works with Gruner. Couple of nice action bits. Kind of interesting to see John Ritter in this type of movie. You also have Robert Culp and Louder Martin Cove from The Karate Kid. John Ritter hires Gruner's character. There's this terrorist attack. 
I think it's John Ritter's wife who's killed. It's been a while since I've seen these movies. It'd be fun to revisit these again. And there actually was a sequel, which never got a DVD release, but I do have the VHS. Uh, you can find it here. Yeah, here it is. Down there. Here it is right here. Get a better look at that. Mercenary 2, Thick and Thin. No John Ritter. Instead you have Nick Totoro and Robert Townsend. I directed I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. The star of The Meteor Man, which I still haven't seen. I know my friend Mike liked it. Pretty much Gruner has to protect and get Robert Townsend. They have to rescue him, then they realize he's not really a kidnap victim and there's other stuff going on. I remember it being kind of interesting to see Gruner and Robert Townsend together on the same screen. Gosh, cat. Gosh. Get. Get. Come on, get. Sorry about that. Be like, why don't you like the cat? I don't know. I just. I delay so much in these videos that. <laughs> it's not that I want to make them shorter, but not as long as I usually do. But thankfully my friend Mike OCP did make me a DVDR of it since my VCR broke so I can watch the film so I'm thankful to him for that. Now we get to honestly I would say these are so-so movies I wouldn't call them good movies. There's Interceptor Force and this two pack with this film called a Steve Velocity with Patrick Bergen. But there's Interceptor Force where Ernie Hudson and Brad Dourif have small roles. Uh, Glenn Plummer, who I think it was in Speed and Speed 2. Pretty much Olivier Gruner and Glenn Plummer. They're mercenaries. They look into this crash. They go to this small town. There's an alien life form there that's sort of like a chameleon. So it's trying to be a little bit like Predator, but not in a jungle. Uh, the effects, though, are really bad. Sci fi channel. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if this was on Sci fi channel. It's from UFO Films. So, yeah. The, if it was just a practical creature, it would be a lot better. I mean, that'd be a lot better than this. Yet. Yeah, I'll close the door. But, yeah, the effects on this are pretty shoddy. And definitely the worst part of the flick. I don't know, it's because it's kind of the closest to see. I want to call this a horror movie, but if. Well, he did. I think he directed a film called Regenerator where he played a killer, and I saw bits of that, and that was absolutely awful. I don't know, just something about this movie didn't make me hate it 100%. But I couldn't recommend the movie either. Same with the sequel, which this was Sci-Fi Channel, Sci-Fi Essentials, Interceptor Force 2, in association with Sci-Fi Channel. Again, the effects are not that good. It's a low-budget flick. Um, maybe just the idea of Gruner battling an alien type of creature, just kind of a fun idea. 
that you know just wish they had a bigger budget, wish that they went with a practical creature, not the shitty CGI. I really wish that was the case. It is not a film I could recommend or defend, but I don't hate it. Like these films, I think are aw absolutely awful. Uh, Scepter Four, which I believe I did a rant on, it should still be up. That was awful. And then these movies are pretty damn awful. TNT. Eric Roberts, you could tell he shot all this stuff in one day because he's in like the same room with the same clothes, mainly just talking on the telephone. Randy Travis, I don't even fucking remember Randy Travis in this. There's a picture of him on the back, I can't remember him. If I try to remember, I think he's the sheriff. And he was friends with Gruner, I believe. Judged by Robert Radler. I think that's the same guy that did Best of the Best 1 and 2? If that's the case, this is a far cry from those movies. This is a pretty cheap, not much action type of flick. Just not much action in this. Uh, Mars. Just the look, they try to make it look like Total Recall, but the plot has nothing to do with Total Recall. This company rules on Mars. He receives a message from his brother. He goes there. His brother's dead. This mystery unfolds. For some reason, he's dubbed in this. Which I don't get why. Because like his first five or so movies, he's not dubbed. I can understand him fine. But for this fucking movie, he's dubbed. It's not his voice. So, whatever the rest of the movie is, I just couldn't pay attention because it just, that just bugged the fuck out of me. Like, why is his voice dubbed? And it's also in one of these weird glass cases. It's very rare that you see these glass cases. I don't have too many of these. I think one I have is the one with oh, Stacy, John Stacy at, the guy who played Sloth in the Goonies, and he was a football player. I think it was John Stasiak. He played like a one-man force, I believe. Like Ronnie Cox is in it. But yeah, this is one of the few glass cases I have. Kind of an interesting choice for uh, a case. Definitely sturdy. Well, I say glass, it's more plastic, it's not glass, but... I don't know, I guess the look just makes me remind me of glass, but it's more plastic, it's not glass. But yeah, you, you can, it bends a little bit, that's, you know... I don't know, it just makes me think of glass. Yeah, that's Mars. Yeah, I don't know why he was dubbed in that. There's the two... I think they made more, but the two circuit movies was not a fan of these. These were just really lame versions of Bloodsport or Hell a Showdown with Billy Blanks. That's a better version of these movies. Underground Fight Club. There are many movies that did this kind of stuff, and I think these are two weaker movies with that. Oh, directed by Jalal Murphy. I don't like that guy. I think he's terrible as an actor. I don't care for his martial arts. And he's, for me, not much of a director. This is a guy who, he was in a film with, I think, Billy Blanks and Bolo Young. I think he worked on these films called Tiger Claws with Cynthia Rothrock. Just not a fan of this guy. And the first one has Billy Drago, the villain from Delta Force 2. He's been in quite a few stuff. Lauren Abedin from King of the Tip Boxers and No Retreat, No Surrender 2. 
The guy actually commented on my review of Team of the Tip Boxers long ago, which I thought was really cool. He's given like nothing to do in this movie. I don't even think he does any fight scenes in this movie. Just someone named the Tiger Twins. Just, oh, in the cast, there's someone called the Tiger Twins with exclamation point. Kind of above my thumb. And you have the Circuit 2. Could not get into these movies. I was actually pretty disappointed in these films. This one has Lorenzo Lamas, which someone said, why don't you show Lorenzo? I only have, well, I guess now technically I only have two Lorenzo Lamas. This movie, which I forgot he was in, and like a DVD of Bad Blood. Uh, I think Alter Tower has a Viper in it, which I didn't mind that. I thought it was a fun, just a lot of, one of those movies that just has a shitload of action. It was a fun time waster. Yeah, about the underground fight circuit. Just, I'd rather just go watch Kip Bocha and Bloodsport again. And then, he did a lot of the movies with this guy named Philip Roth. Because, Philip Roth also did... Uh, I've seen his name a couple times. Interceptor 2. Interceptor 1. I thought it was more than that. Interceptor 1, Interceptor 2. Avi Nusher did Mercenary. John Hess did Mars. John Hess. Isn't that the guy who did Watchers? There's a different John Hess. Okay, maybe he didn't do as much as I thought, but... So, Phil Roth did the Interceptor movies, and he also did this, Velocity Trap. Crime at the Speed of Light. And I can't believe it, this is like the only DVD where there's a commentary track with Philip Roth, special effects expert Andrew Hoffman, and Olivier Gruner, he's actually on the commentary track. I don't remember much about it. <laughs> I haven't seen this in forever, but of all the films in this film, Velocity Trap gets a commentary track. Once again, I remember this being a very low-budget, lame movie with not a lot of action and really cheap special effects. Police officer is reassigned to escort the federal banking ship through the Bermuda Triangle of Space, the Velocity Run. Everything on board is run by an oncoming 600 million ton asteroid, as well as a team of well-armed thieves that have docked alongside them. I just remember not much happening in the movie. Must in UFO films like Interceptor Force, but I can't believe all the. F this is the one with the commentary track. Can't believe. It. But yeah, that's my collection on Oliver Gruner or Olivier Gruner. Either way, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you later.